Hi. In this video we're going to have a look at the Tor T1211 soldering station. So this one was sent to me free of charge by Ekins for this review and I'll put a link to the Ekins AliExpress listing for this device in the description down below. So what it is, is a JBC type soldering station. So it's got a very similar looking handle to the JBC um, and it's got the same connector and everything on here. The Xteps standard JBC C245 cartridges. So we're going to give this um, soldering tip a little go today, but it does also come with um, three fairly standard tips to get you going. And to do a bit of soldering practice, I've got a couple of boards from JLC PCB. So we'll do a little bit of through hole soldering and then uh, have a go at soldering these much finer pitch devices with this new tip that I've just bought. So this is sort of a hoof tip designed for drag soldering and we'll see how it performs on these devices. Now this unit is rated for about 75 watts into the soldering tip, so very similar uh, to the standard power output of these types of devices. And one nice thing about this unit is the handpiece actually connects into the um, soldering iron holder. So you can actually have the unit remote, remotely mounted away from the stand and then um, you've still got your standard lead length coming from the stand so that you can solder in freedom. So actually this is quite nice because this doesn't have to be directly on the workbench. So four self-tapping screws later and the cover just comes off and at first glance it doesn't look too bad at all really. So uh, we've got the IEC connector on the back with a fuse and a switch. The ground lead from the IEC connector literally just goes to this four millimeter banana terminal at the back. Doesn't actually go into the device because the secondary is fully isolated through this big isolating transformer. We've got a little suppression capacitor, presumably that's just connected across the primary. And then we've got the wiring from the stand that goes straight onto the main PCB. And it's held in place by this um, little feature in the base. So you can actually remove this. It's not screwed to the rear panel, but this uh, actual feature just holds this connector in place. Then we've got a fairly chunky transformer here with two secondary windings, an 8 volt winding for the control electronics, and a 20 volt AC 5 amp winding for the actual heater control. This is a single primary transformer, so for 220 volts AC only. Um, I'm not sure if there's a 110 volt version available. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's any version that is going to be switchable between the two voltages. One thing that I do quite like about this already is it's very modular in design, which suggests that someone actually put some serious thought into the design. You can just disconnect the three terminals and the front panel just comes off completely. And this is where all of our control circuitry is. As you can see, it's all looking really quite neat. So a fairly straightforward design looking at the PCB. We've got our extra low voltage AC coming in here, a bridge rectifier on a fairly chunky heatsink for the 24 volt supply to the heater, and a much smaller bridge rectifier here for our uh, electronics on the board. The actual microcontroller here is an STM32, and then this is our output to the actual heater. So we can see our MOSFET control here. We've got current sensing along with some op amps here to check the current through the heater. Um, and not a great deal on here actually, it's all fairly straightforward. We've got a ribbon cable which is going to our front panel um, buttons along here. And then this is a graphic LCD monochrome display. And you can see the ribbon cable just comes on to here and connects into this connector and straight into the microcontroller. So really not a great deal of uh, other stuff going on here. We've got one more connector just here which is doing the sensing for the temperature. Uh, and that's going straight onto this op amp and then into the analog inputs on the STM32. We have got a programming header here, so the SWD interface, and that's about it really, but everything looks really quite nicely built. Now generally speaking, I do really like this kind of topology. If you've got a standard iron core transformer, feeding a bridge rectifier and some capacitors, there's very little to go wrong in a device like this. This should last a very long time. Um, because a lot of the components in a switch mode power supply are put under quite a high amount of stress, which is why you start seeing them fail. Um, you know, when it's uh, got a standard transformer here, you're not going to see huge ripple currents through these capacitors. So they should last quite a long time. They're also very easily serviceable. There's not a lot of troubleshooting that you need to go to 
with this type of system. So, um, you know, I've got high hopes that this would last actually quite a long time on the bench. Now, I'm not sure why they do this with the soldering stations, but the selection of tips that you get with it is fairly useless. They've got this slanted tip, which you can use for cutting plastic, and, and you can also use it for desoldering two pin devices. You just put this across the two pins, then you can drop it out of the board. Then you get a super pointy conical tip, which makes it very difficult to get enough heat into the solder joint. Um, they do have limited usefulness. You can use it for SOT23 type devices occasionally. Um, and then probably the most useful out the three is this conical tip with the slight curve on it. And actually what you end up doing with these is using them very similar to a chisel type tip because there's a whole contact area here that you can use for your soldering. Right, so let's power it up. And it boots straight up, so ready to go with soldering straight away. It's detected there's no tool connected because the handpiece isn't connected. We've got the set point temperature and the actual temperature. Um, it's reading garbage basically because there's no handpiece connected. And the user interface is really straightforward. So you press set and you can adjust the temperature up and down in five degree increments, which is a lot better than some of these where you have to incre increment it in one degree increments, which is sort of completely pointless. And you just press OK and it's stored. Now it does have some sleep mode. So when you put the handpiece into the stand, it drops down to 150 degrees C. And then after 30 minutes of it being in the stand, it basically turns the handpiece off. So, uh, you know, quite good from a sleep and preserving the tip point of view. Let's see how it actually handles some soldering. And so no problems there with just standard through-hole parts. Right, let's go for the big 208-pin LQFP. And for all you playing along at home, tools used here were the Solder King Halogen Free Rework Gel, some Multicore Crystal 505 No Clean Lead Solder, Loctite No Clean Wick Type NC-AA, Flux Clean to actually clean up the PCB, and the soldering iron tip used for the drag soldering was the JBC C245067. So that's a look at the T12-11 soldering station from the Ekin store. And overall, I've got no complaints over this system. It does feel really quite robust. The stand here that's remote from this unit and the way that the handpiece plugs into it is really quite a nice feature. You've got about 1.5 meters between this and the stand, which means that this can be sitting up on a shelf out the way and you don't really need to worry about what it's doing. It just sort of works once you've set your temperature I mean, on the Metcal systems, I have no temperature control anyway, other than the tips that you put in. But generally speaking, you shouldn't need to change it from anything other than 330 or 340 degrees C for uh, the majority of soldering tasks. It's really quite a well-built unit. The actual stand is quite heavy duty, really quite nicely built. Um, but the tips that come with it are fairly useless. So I'd probably consider buying some additional tips if you're thinking about buying this. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Thank you to JLC PCB for providing the PCBs. And until next time, thanks for watching.